Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fusion Industry Association channel. My name is Sid Cowley, I'm a PhD student working at the Cullum Center for Fusion Energy. Today is Friday, the 9th of October, and I'm here to give you your weekly Fusion News Roundup. Stories today include 1. Validating the physics behind the new MIT-designed Fusion experiment. 2. Error forecasting for safer Fusion energy. 3. UK completes Fusion Research Facility. 4. Experimental nuclear reactor powers China's dream of limitless energy. And finally, as always, we'll have some bonuses at the end. 1. Validating the physics of the new MIT-designed fusion experiment. Now, this story has been in the news quite a lot recently. The uh, New York Times, physics.org, the Daily Mail, Popular Mechanics, they've all been talking about Commonwealth fusion systems. And this is why. Last week, MIT published a summary of research performed into the technical feasibility of SPARC, a compact spherical tokamak currently being developed by Commonwealth Fusion Systems. The research consisted of seven research papers, which made in-depth calculations and predictions into various aspects of the machine, from core performance to MHD instabilities and disruptions. Overall, the current predictions bode very well indeed for the Spark project. In particular, Spark aimed to have a Q factor of two, which is the fusion power out relative to the power you put in for heating. The recent predictions, however, show that Spark could have a Q factor of 10. To put this into context, the Tokamak Eater also wants to have a Q factor of 10, but this Tokamak is more than 50 times the volume of Spark and is the most expensive fusion project ever made. So, if Spark could really achieve such high performance in a small device, that would be a large step towards cheap, reliable fusion energy. 2. Error forecasting for safer fusion energy. Now this story discusses the technical phenomenon known as error fields and how they can impact the operation of a tokamak. Now if you've watched our channel before, you'll know that a tokamak is a machine composed of a donut-shaped vacuum vessel surrounded by magnetic field coils. Now in every tokamak there will exist errors associated with the manufacturing or implementing of the coil. This in turn produces errors in the magnetic field in the plasma, the error field. Now these error fields are not good for the plasma, and in fact they can cause massive confinement loss events known as disruptions. This article by Lab News discusses the importance of quantifying how large a error field can get before the plasma disrupts, so that the manufacturers can adjust their specifications accordingly. Now currently rough scaling laws are used to determine the maximum allowable error fields, but researchers at Princeton and the Max Planck Institute for Plasma Physics aim to gain more accurate predictions on error fields using a combination of chaos and perturbed equilibrium codes. This story is just another example of how high-performance computing really is at the forefront of many developments in fusion. 3. The UK completes fusion research facility. Now, this story focuses on the completion of the Advanced Manufacturing Park in South Yorkshire, completed on budget and ahead of schedule. This facility will be home to many companies, and among them the UK Atomic Energy Authority will use this space to test new joining technologies for use in fusion devices. These technologies include new metals and ceramics, and will be tested under high heat fluxes and with high magnetic fields, similar to the environment one might see in a fusion reactor. Now, many fusion materials test facilities exist across the world, but the Advanced Manufacturing Park is important because it focuses on scaled-up manufacturing of the components as well as baseline scientific feasibility. 4. Experimental Nuclear Reactor Powers China's Dream of Limitless Energy This article focuses on China's contribution to the ITER tokamak, currently being built in France, and states that China's goal is not just to contribute to the project, but also to learn a lot from it. China hopes to use the experience to cultivate its own talent, and eventually to become one of the first countries to build a fusion reactor. Wang Min, Deputy Director of the China International Nuclear Fusion Program Execution Center, says, A great deal of young Chinese talent has been nurtured in the ITER program. China has amplified its voices and contributed more wisdom to the nuclear fusion world. China has been operating its own tokamak East, which achieved fusion temperatures of over 100 million degrees in April. The article says that the next step is to build a test reactor in 2021, known as the China Fusion Engineering Test Reactor. And after that, China aims to build commercial fusion plants by 2050. Well, that's all of the main news for today, but as always, we have a few extra stories as well. First, an update on a story from a previous video. In Fusion News on the 25th of September, we reported that the House of Representatives was voting on the Clean Economy, Jobs and Innovation Act, including an amendment on nuclear energy. We are pleased to announce that they have approved the project, 
which allows the U.S. Department of Energy to pursue public-private partnerships where federal funds will be available for private companies developing fusion technologies. Now, with all these developments with the U.S. government and nuclear fusion, we've actually had Andrew Holland and Melanie Windridge of the Fusion Industry Association put out several thought pieces on this exact topic. Andrew has written for the Washington Times with a piece entitled Fusion Needs Smart Federal Government Regulation, and Melanie has written for Forbes on the new space race in fusion energy. If you're interested in any of these thought pieces, the links will always be in the description. Finally, a fun little bonus from the Guinness Book of World Records. Jackson Oswalt has just become the youngest person to achieve fusion. He did this at age just 12, achieving a little piece of the sun right there in his playroom. Right, well that's all for Fusion News this week. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, please feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Also, if any of the stories covered today are of particular interest to you, their links are in the description as always. Thank you for watching.